All right, here we are, mid-May 2022. Already it's been a bit of a strange spring. We had an early, uh, early warm-up in early April, and then mid-April through the end of April, it cooled down a lot unseasonably. Temperatures overnight in the 30s, and it has kept some lawns like this one right here, which would typically be very green, very lush this time of the year. It still looks like it's not all the way greened up. So that's pretty meaningful because we've got now a miniature heat wave coming looks like in the next few weeks temperatures in the low 90s uh, for seven to ten days in a row and uh, parts of the city have been uh, in kind of a drought situation it's been very dry so this early in the season we don't want any anybody's lawn to get behind uh, which is why it is super important if you're not receiving rain you have not begun irrigating on a regular basis you've got to do it now Otherwise, you're gonna set yourself up for a very hard summer. Uh, one of the ways that you can know if your lawn actually needs water is when you walk across it out to the mailbox or coming in from the car or you're outside with the kids, if you look back behind you and even 30 seconds a minute later, it is very clear that you can see your footprints. Uh, that means the hydration has been lost from the cells of the plants and it's just not able to rebound the way it normally would. So that's gonna be the first sign that it's probably time to put some water on it in the very near future. The next step, and I will illustrate it over here in the corner, this, this section of the lawn up against the sidewalk, uh, maybe even catching a little bit of the reflection from these energy efficient windows. Uh, this area is suffering much more than the rest of the lawn. And at least from my, my perspective, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it kind of has a grayish, bluish purple sort of hue uh, and it's it's wilting at this point the grass is still very much healthy and will rebound very quickly when we get some rainfall or proper irrigation but the next step is going to be what I call a, a stress induced dormancy uh, a defense mechanism of the grass is going to be to go into dormancy so it doesn't have to utilize that water and it can it can protect itself during really harsh conditions it'll go closer to like a straw color, like it would if it were in actual dormancy in the winter time. Uh, and that, it's gonna be a lot harder to get that back to green. Uh, and we wanna, we wanna see the lawns not get to that point. But uh, if it does happen, you know, no need to be concerned, but we do wanna get the water on it ASAP. Uh, watering is so important for our program. Our fertilizer is not gonna be utilized by the turf very well if proper hydration is not present. Our herbicide is not gonna be as effective if the lawn is in a drought condition uh, and the likelihood that there may be some, you know, minor frustration caused by our herbicide on the lawn, you know, that the, the chance of that goes up when it's very dry. Uh, if you are not currently watering, uh, the service that you're gonna receive from us is gonna be diminished. So I cannot stress how important it is to begin watering early. It is only mid-May and we have no idea what this summer is really going to be like uh, so we don't want the lawn to get behind and the root system to suffer unnecessarily if we were having this discussion in august it would just be par for the course but the fact that it is mid-may right now uh, it's time to put the irrigation on uh, so my recommendations for most lawns if it is uh, if they're receiving one and a half inches of water each week either through irrigation rainfall or a combination of the two that is going to be enough to stimulate good root health and, and keep the plant healthy and happy and be able to uh, continue on no matter how how hot the season is to be healthy. so how are you going to want to measure that you know some irrigation systems that are new they have they will do the conversion for you x number of minutes equals y number of inches on the lawn but uh, if you don't have any sort of system like that, you can set up a series of rain gauges, maybe where several of your irrigation heads converge, or if you just have to set an old-fashioned sprinkler out on the lawn, you can set a, a wide mouth cup or pot or tuna can, anything like that that can act as a rain gauge. Uh, set your stopwatch, turn the water on, and see how long it takes you to accumulate an inch to an inch and a half in that in that makeshift rain gauge and then you'll know how many wa uh, how many minutes of watering you need to do to do it early in the morning is going to be better any water you can give it is better than no water 
but ideally we want to do it early in the morning. Uh, air temperature is going to be low. Soil temperature is going to be low. Uh, the value you get from the water is going to be greatest. If you water in midday or late in the evening, it's going to be, the soil temperature is going to be very hot and you're likely going to lose a lot of water from evaporation. Uh, plus you create some environments where fungus might be an issue. So in the morning, cool temperatures, the ground should already be a little bit wet from dew anyway. So that's, that's the prime time to put water on the lawn. Uh, fewer waterings is better than more waterings. Allowing the grass to feel a little bit of stress is not a bad thing because when we water it for a long period of time and sink it deep into the root zone, we're gonna stimulate a response from the roots by growing deep. It feels a little bit of stress, three, four, five days without water, then we water very deeply. We're training the roots to run deep and that's ultimately going to be very resilient and it's gonna survive uh, a lot more stresses that nature may throw at it. So in ideal circumstances, one very deep irrigation every week should be enough to keep the lawn healthy and happy. Maybe not as vibrant as it would be if we were getting rain three or four times a week, but very healthy uh, and very resilient. If you happen to be on a slope or have very compacted soil and it just doesn't seem to want to absorb all of that water, that inch and a half of water at one time, then you may need to uh, divide it up into two waterings. But either way, you want to trend that way. Less often, but for longer duration when you do water. That's going to be the recipe for success. Uh, and we want, we want to help you as best we can, do the best job we can. Um, so we've got our part. Nature does its part. You do your part. And if we all come together and uh, work as a team, then we'll have the best results possible.